Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to talk about panel lining, but specifically we're going to do a little science and figure out the best way to do really bright panel lining. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get into the technique in learned Vinci V style. 10th edition 40k is upon us and of course I'm pretty excited uh, about the new edition. It's brought back and rekindled a love of 40k I've had for more than 25 years now. And as such, I thought, hey, maybe I'll paint up a new force. And the thing that grabbed my attention was some Tau. I've always thought Tau looked cool, I like giant robots, and I wanted a simple scheme, something I could execute on quickly. What always appealed to me about Tau was these fun, deep panel lines that they have. And it's easy and great to panel line in dark colors. So if you have bright colored towel and you want to do dark panel lining, we've talked about that on this channel many times, both using things like actual panel liners, products that are made specifically for that, or oil washes, traditional washes, inks, anything like that. But I wanted something different. I wanted some towel that looked more like Tron, basically. You know, these bright, ultra punchy neon lines tracing around uh, the, the, the miniature itself. The problem is getting those really bright thin lines to fill the panels with a fluorescent pigment or a fluorescent color is a lot harder. It's easy to make recesses dark, it's often hard to make recesses bright. There's not as much need and so there's not as many products. Today we're going to talk about three different methods you can use at home to create this Tron-like effect on your minis and get some really punchy, awesome looking minis. So let's head over to the desk. Let's do some science. All right, so we're just gonna start by laying down Abaddon Black over the whole model. This is over top of the primer. And the reason I'm using Abaddon Black, although I normally hate this paint and find it to be quite not a good paint because it's very satin, all of its bad sides are gonna be positives here. I'm not going to do anything with the rest of the color except edge highlighting. I want the surface of the thing to be very dark to pop out against the Tron lines. So satin, Abaddon Black, do my highlighting for me, move on. All right, method number one. We're going to take alcohol and we're going to put it into some ink. Uh, basically, we're going to do two drops of alcohol to every one drop of ink, or sorry, three drops to one. Apologize. And um, this is just basically a theory I had. Alcohol breaks up surface tension. It's often used in other paints to uh, increase the flow. Uh, alcohol itself, if directly exposed and let sit on acrylic paint, can be quite destructive to it. But if mixed in like this, it can actually just enhance and help the flow. And my theory here was correct. It's basically acting like a super flow improver. Uh, it should go without saying that if you're going to do this kind of work, a good sharp brush for this kind of tracing is of high value. So this worked basically how I thought it would. Uh, what I mean by that is I was able to very easily trace the lines quite accurately. Uh, the paint just wicked right off the end of the brush, no drama at all. Uh, and you know, any kind of sharp line I was able to, to, to fill. The issue of course is that I still had to go through and trace every single line. The other challenge here is alcohol evaporates very quickly. Uh, it's a highly evaporative substance. And so I found myself having to both rinse the brush regularly, as well as go back uh, in to get more, you know, sort of wet paint regularly. You can't sit there and just keep doing these lines. You really have to be constantly sort of refreshing your brush. Now, the bright side to this method was if your hand is steady, as you can see there, mine wasn't because I hit the space that was, the, that was outside of it. But if your hand is steady, then that's a very easy method. There's very little cleanup. I then did the same thing with the Golden High Flow Fluorescent Pink. This is one of my favorite fluorescent colors. I can't recommend the Golden High Flows enough for this purpose. Um, it's already a pretty well flowing paint, uh, but we of course added alcohol to this again in the same ratio. And I found again, this made it flow really smoothly. Now there's no real capillary actioning happen with, ha action happening with this first one. That is to say, I can't just touch an area of the model and watch it fill the entire recess as you could normally do with something like an oil paint or something similar. So this is still requiring a lot of very careful work and tracing. Now the bright side of the fluorescent side, especially being as thin as it is with the alcohol, 
is it's relying on the color sort of gathering in the recess to really build up. Whenever I did sort of miss swipe or, or hit something outside of the space, you really couldn't tell. All right, so now we're gonna try oils. We're gonna do a little comparison. So this is some standard Gamsol white spirits from Gamlin and uh, some light flesh tone, which is about the closest to white you're gonna get uh, with, a, with a nice, uh, I wanted a little bit of warmth in it, basically. I didn't wanna use just a normal dead white. So we mix the living bejesus out of this, like just mix, 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 until it is so thin. And as you can see, I was using quite a lot of white spirits there, but still enough. Now, this worked exactly as I sort of suspected it would. Um, you want to get a lot on your brush. You don't need to worry about having a very sharp brush here because you're effectively trying to have an overloaded brush, a brush just full of liquid. And then you're going to try to touch the brush against the miniature in an area where hopefully uh, it doesn't really matter if anything spills over. So for example, I was leaning on like those rivets and things that I knew were going to be painted differently where I could. And I just let the capillary action do its work. I will admit this is incredibly satisfying to do. Uh, you just touch and then boom, it fills that whole recess like a, like a river just flowing forth of paint. It uh, feels like cheating. Now, the advantage to this method is pretty simple. You don't need a sharp hand. Uh, you don't need uh, a sharp brush. You don't need fine control. You just move your way around, touching the miniature in little dabs and dots and the capillary action basically does the rest for you. The downside, of course, here is probably fairly obvious. This is an oil paint and it's going to dry very slowly. So I had to let that sit for an entire day before I then did this step. This is Galkit and oil painting medium, plus some fluorescent pink pigments, plus a little bit of white spirits um, to keep everything flowing. And once again, I found that this little chemical mixture here actually worked really nice. So Galkid is a medium for oil painting that effectively can be used to sort of thin and add a very, like a shine and durability to it. Um, it's fairly glossy as a, as a thing. The white spirits help break it up, which is normally a thinner you use with uh, oil paints anyways. So I'm just using the same effective thinner. Once again, the application is the same. You want an overloaded brush and you're going to touch and the capillary action will do most of the work. Now I had to make sure the first layer was completely dry before I did this. So as I said, this is maybe a day, day and a half later, honestly. Um, even with that small amount in the recesses, because it was in the recesses, I wanted to give it plenty of time. Now, the challenge to this one is that when it dries, it becomes very, very, very glossy. And, and that really becomes a challenge in the long run because other paint doesn't want to sit on top of this as easily and yet again you do need to give this a really long time to dry. So the capillary action on this one's incredible but ultimately the finish is weird because you have to really give a long time for it to dry and then really matte varnish everything down. Like I had to put uh, basically three coats of, of ultra matte varnish over it to get it back into being completely neutral and matte. I'll be honest all three of these things take time. So when you're looking at this, there's a series of different things you're trying to balance. The first one is how fast can I create the lines around the miniature? And then the second one is how much cleanup do I have afterward? It doesn't help if you can do everything really fast, if then you have to spend a ton of time in cleanup. So as I was experimenting with these, I was always trying to be mindful of balancing the total time involved in creating the effect, not just making the lines themselves bright. All right, method number three. I'm returning back to the ink uh, plus uh, alcohol, but this time I have a new idea. I've also added some flow improver and quite a lot of it. And what I found is by adding a lot of that flow improver and then having that overloaded brush, I could get the capillary action because I didn't need that high of a percentage of the white ink to have it still have a strong effect. Because all of that pigment is gathering together in the recess, the ratio of white ink could actually be pretty low and still have a really strong effect. And so in doing this, I was able to actually reintroduce that great capillary action, not quite as good as with the oils. Those do admittedly flow better, but the alcohol plus the, the, the white ink plus a, you know, a decent amount, let's say another 
uh, two to one of flow improver, I found actually gave me really good results to lay down that base coat uh, and, and start that strong capillary action and get the mini done quickly. Now this is a little messy because you're gonna get those dots everywhere uh, and those will need to be taken care of. Now here was my revelation. Just take regular alcohol plus pigment. Nothing less, nothing more. So this is pigment dumped into alcohol. And not a lot of pigment, even so. Uh, because again, it's all collecting into a very small space. It's working over a near pure white. So it's going to have a strong effect. Here, I, will, I loved this method. This was ultimately a big winner for me because I was able to, you can see how strong the capillary action is here. Plus the alcohol doesn't fully really set the pigment, which would be a problem if it was on a flat surface, but it's not, it's on a recess where your hand doesn't actually touch. If you wanted to, you could varnish afterward either way. But uh, because it's in that recess, it just gathers in there, deposits that pigment and then evaporates. And what you're left with is a really pure, bright version of the pigment alone. And it was so fast to go and fill this. Now, the only downside here was because the way I did the white, you can see all the extra dots that are here outside where the sort of fat, overly laden brush had to touch against the miniature. So, you know, we'll have to go back and clean those up later. But I found this method to be really easy and rewarding. So this was just the 99% isopropyl alcohol uh, plus the raw pigment. Uh, about one 128th of a teaspoon to probably uh, four drops of alcohol. It does evaporate quickly, but that was a super easy time to work my way around the mini, tint everything, and it finished so bright and so intense. Once I was done with everything, I just went back in with Abaddon Black, and you can see there's areas where, I, you know, sort of, um, there's paint where it shouldn't be, where either I touched the miniature wrongly or those little initial white dots got there. Little cleanup, and then we're good to go. All right, there we go. There's all three of the different methods. Now let's take a look at the outcome. So here's the three of them next to each other. I'll be honest, I really like the last method the best. So this was simple, alcohol and pigment. It flows really well and really fast into the recesses. It's extremely bright and punchy the way the alcohol, because it has almost no surface tension, it deposits the pigment really evenly in the recess and ultimately it locks it in there. Now, if alcohol and pigment is all you have on a normal flat surface, you can actually wipe it away quite easily. It doesn't set as fully. However, since these are only in the recesses and we don't really touch the recesses of the miniature, it actually works really well. And moreover, on those larger flat surfaces, it becomes quite easy and fast to clean up. Additional layers of paint going over the top are simple. Sometimes you can even just wipe it away with a wet brush. So for me, the first method is the sort of easy, you don't have anything else, uh, but you, it takes a longer amount of time, but it's very clean. The second method, although a neat chemistry experiment in the oils and how we could make that work, in the end just didn't really work for me. The color is flatter, it's really glossy uh, base, and it was just ultimately, you didn't really gain the speed and I had to sit there and wait a long time for everything to dry and set. The third method of just the alcohol and pigment or, the, or really taking down the alcohol and ink with some flow improver in the, in the white, those two combined made this process fast, easy, and a breeze. So that's ultimately what I would recommend if you want to try to replicate this uh, on your own minis. Uh, hey, I hope you liked this. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. Um, there's going to be plenty more uh, Forehammer 40K and AOS and display miniature and everything you can imagine content coming up as always, every Saturday. If you've got a question, drop that down below. I always answer every question asked on the channel. If you want to support the channel, hey, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, there's a Patreon link down there focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.